Well, on behalf of all of us here at the BC Teachers Federation, welcome to this afternoon's workshop. From Ayotzinapa to Ottawa, Mexico in crisis. Most Canadians know Mexico as a land of friendly tourism, beautiful beaches, and bright sunshine. But there's also a dark reality in Mexico, a reality of repression, torture, and murder. We have learned about that reality through our BCTF International Solidarity Program. Over the past 25 years, we've built strong relationships with Mexican teachers and their unions, and their experiences have taught us a lot about the repression in their country. But last fall, a human rights crime took place on a scale that we could never have imagined before. On September 26, Mexican state security forces attacked a group of student teachers in Ayotzinapa, a small town inland from Acapulco. They killed six people and forcibly disappeared 43 others. The search for the 43 missing students has uncovered more than 15 mass graves in neighboring areas of the state of Guerrero. None of them contain the bodies of the missing students. These atrocities have shocked the world into recognizing that there is a human rights crisis in Mexico. Some of the people directly impacted by these terrible events are with us today to share their stories and help us learn about what we can do about it. We have Hilda Legidianiel Vargas. She's a mother of one of the 43 students who were disappeared in the September 26 attack. And we also have Raul Gatica, who's the coordinator of the Vancouver section of the Indigenous and Populous Council of Oaxaca. And we're also hoping to have, who's not here right now, is Jorge Luis Clementi Balboene, who's a member of the student committee of the Ayotzinapa Teachers College. Please join me in welcoming them here today. And we're going to start off with uh, Raul giving a kind of a broader context to the struggle right now. Raul. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes, todos. Thank you for the chance to oh. speak with you. Um, gracias por la oportunidad de hablar con ustedes. Y, y uh, para dar la oportunidad a Hilda y Jorge Luis. Um, para hablar por parte de los otros padres y madres de familia y los estudiantes uh, que fueron desaparecidos el 26 y 27 um, de uh, septiembre de 2014. Después de esta acción vergonzosa uh, por la policía eh, con la complicidad de distintos niveles del gobierno, el mundo se volvió horrorizados uh, por las uh, atrocidades uh, y muchas demostraciones uh, uh, muchas manifestaciones han pasado uh, las madres y padres han uh, encorajado uh, uh, a todos a participar para unir voces con ellos para que demanding to bring all the 43 students alive, bring back alive, all of them. In Mexico, thousands uh, of people has been making demonstration. In Geneva, the United Nations has been raising his voice, demanding to the government to do something. The Inter-American Commission also has been recommending something, academic, uh, intellectual, artists, everybody has been demanding to the Peña Nieto government to bring the 43 student, student back. So the testimony from uh, Hilda and Jorge uh, is really important to share with you, to bring their dignity and invite you to participate with them. Thank you, Hilda, to join us and stay with us in this trip. The caravan uh, will go in Quebec and Ontario, and also 
uh, they will testify in the Human Rights Commission. Uh, the caravan has been uh, do planning different activities, including meeting with members of the parliament and meeting with the media and especially talking with the civil society in Canada. Uh, we expected that all of you join us to participate with them in the fundraising that we are having in uh, April 17 in the Legion in Commercial and, and 6th Avenue in Vancouver. Thank you, Raul. And now we'll go to uh, Yilda. So this is where you want to turn on your here. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Hilda Legitenian Vargas. I'm the father of Luis Antonio Zappa. My reason for being here is first, I want to thank you um, for giving us the opportunity um, to have us listen to. The reason we're here is to denounce the violation of the human rights um, that the Mexican government is doing against its own people, against the um, uh, normal school students. Uh, since the uh, 26th of September, <coughs> it was the government that took away our children because it was municipal police with the complicity of the army and because they also participated in the um, abduction. But the government hasn't wanted to investigate the army's role. And so we have told them that it's important to investigate this. Uh, and we should also investigate the former governor of uh, Guerrero and Hel. Aguirre. But to date, they still haven't um, investigated. We don't know why they're trying to cover this up. Um, but um, it, perhaps if they continue in investigating, they'll notice that other levels of government has had a role in it. Because in this crime, uh, both the federal, state, and municipal governments were involved. The governor of Mexico says it was organized crime that um, took away our children. But uh, unfortunately, in Mexico, we are governed by organized crime. So the same criminals are those who are in the um, leaderships in the political key political positions in Mexico. And so it's our demand of the government, um, because it was the government, the police that took them. And so our demand, and our demand will always be towards the government. In February, uh, organized crime um, located a banner, hung a banner, in which they said that they were not responsible for what happened. They also said that it was the government. Um, and so we will continue, and we're going to continue looking for our children. Uh, um, the government uh, makes use of this, their police to kill, to disappear, to kill, kill students. This has happened in the past as well. In 2011, um, two student teachers from our normal school were also uh, killed by the police. So this is something that's an ongoing process. Uh, and so right now, our case is before the Inter-American Committee of Human Rights, and they're carrying out uh, investigation. We've called on the Inter-American Human Rights Commission because uh, we're not, we're finding the government is not carrying out the investigation. Um, and so the uh, Inter-American Human Rights Commission has, has made their first recommendations to the government. And one is that uh, they need to use uh, up-to-date technology, um, that they ask for the support of the international community to provide the technology for looking for the students, because to date they haven't made use of these. Um, because the government, we've gone with the government in, in the research, that the investigations they do, they just go down the road. Um, they don't look thoroughly. Um, and so this is why they haven't found our children. Um, and, but because we think that they have them, uh, we don't think they're going to take us to where our children are. So since the 26th of September, we have gone to look in hospitals, in prisons. Uh, we went all through the town of Iwala. Uh, but in the moment, we still haven't been able to find our children. 
And now we have to go uh, overseas, abroad, to put pressure on the Mexican government because they don't want to do anything. For them, the case is closed. Um, in one occasion, they said our, our children were buried in mass graves. But later, uh, we asked for the support of Argentine investigators from the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team. And um, if, if we had accepted the government saying that these were our children, we would have buried bodies that weren't ours. After that was disproved, the government said that uh, they were burned and so there was no trace of their bodies. But we've had uh, discussions with um, scientists from the Autonomous University of Mexico who say that it's impossible that there would be no trace given the lower temperatures of the burning. Um, so we're going to continue our search. We really want to know where, where our children are, and we're finding that to find them, we have to leave the country. Um, so because we need the support of the international community, if you can call on your government to make a declaration around this, um, because we don't know what else to do. We're, we're very desperate. It's been more than six months, and we want to find our children. Um, so we ask for your help. I don't know how exactly you can help, but uh, putting pressure on your own government to, to pronounce about this, um, because our demand is to find our children. That's what we want. And so this is what we ask for support for, is, is helping us find our children. Thank you. So at um, uh, this time, uh, if there's any uh, questions, we've got some time to uh, take questions from anyone. Julia? Can you talk about the normal schools in Mexico and the tradition of them confronting government? And en parte de esa tradición de exigir al gobierno uh, por parte de los, la, los estudiantes en las escuelas normalistas cree usted in relation to the training schools I'm not sure how the normal schools work exactly our kids our children the 43 the 43 uh, well, I've come as a representative of the, f the parents of the 43 students, and we've been talking about our students, but they were in a uh, an activity of trying to get um, funds to get to the city of Mexico to protest about what happens, what happened in the the uh, massacre of Tateloco. This activity was directed and they, so they were they were carrying out these fundraising activities in order to get to the city of Mexico and there the kids it's a school of a conscious of conscious and the government doesn't like that they speak the truth and so that's why they wanted to disappear the the schools we don't know if that's the actual motive in this case of our children but that's what we think and that's what we've we've had talks with the government and we've said to their face you know why what do you want like why did you disappear our kids because it, it was your own police that did so so at this moment we don't have an answer from the government so we don't know they don't they don't respond to us recently they've closed the doors to us since uh, january 27th they've can they consider the case closed and so now we we have to look for other options and so we're going to continue until we find our kids. I don't know if 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 a, if a student were here, um, uh, they would be able to explain to you how the normal schools work. But I'm not quite sure how they how they how they get how they work or how they work there. How can Canadians help? ¿Cómo pueden los canadienses ayudar? Well, 
I honestly don't really know what you can do, but you know what we've asked is that you raise your voices, that you ask your government that so with, through their relations with Mexico, oh, that you stop calling it a safe country because really Mexico is not a safe country. It's, you know, s s foreigners have gone there and been killed, people have been kidnapped. Uh, so Mexico is not a safe country. So if you can pr speak out about that and ask the government to ask our government that they really do real investigations to find our kids, because for us, that, that's what would help us. Uh, well, uh, I will I will try to answer a little bit uh, in the context from Oaxaca and try to link it with the uh, rural uh, schools because it's almost the same situation. But also I want to tell you that the Jorge Luis is uh, selling me, sending me a message. He is sending me a message to say that Jorge Luis is going. He prefers to go to the TRS because the doctor recommend him to to TRS. So he say sorry to don't stay. He will he will he won't come today. Um, the rural uh, schools uh, were formed uh, many years ago uh, by the President Lázaro Cárdenas. These uh, schools are especially for native people or for poor people. The especially, especially the, those rural schools uh, are the only one alternative for many people because they provide food and they provide shelter uh, in order to study. So the poor people don't have a chance to go to the university, they go to the normal, uh, the, the, the school teachers uh, and finish a career to become a professor from uh, far away towns where nobody wanna go to teach the, the children. The long history for those uh, school uh, has been a critical thinking, uh, has been a school where the people uh, became really conscious about the poverty, about the injustice, uh, because the student already suffered this situation. So they, they feel in his own reality the, the suffering. So when they go to the uh, school teacher, the rural school teacher, uh, to become a teacher, his awareness increased uh, then when they back to the uh, small towns to teaching with the children, uh, of course they became a kind of leaders or representative for the communities, advisor for this, the communities. And in many cases those uh, teachers became uh, leaders for the huge movements, including the guerrilla. For this situation, the government falsely accused them to be part of the guerrilla. In many cases, some uh, members of the government say, we need to disappear the, the school teacher because it's the place where the uh, members of the guerrilla born, or because the troublemaker is still there. That's why we need to destroy those school. That is totally false, because what those school uh, provides awareness uh, uh, to get involved into the reality that they are uh, living. Most of the time in those uh, kind of school, the rural school, are native people like, uh, in this case, in Ayotzinapa, Amuzgos, Nahuas, Mixtecos, and Tlapanecos, I, I, I guess, uh, in Guerrero, mostly in those schools. And also non-native people too, but who are uh, poor, and, and they get the chance to go to this, those schools. It's true that those students do different activities to get some money to go to teaching. They get money not used for demonstration. They raise money or ask for money in different uh, communities not used for demonstration, but it is also because the privatization of the education 
has been reducing the budget to buy uh, pedagogica, pedag pedagogical materials, for example, so the student has to collect money in order to buy some materials uh, when they go to practicing to be a teacher in the faraway towns. That's why they, um, they collected money. They go to do a boteo, is what they say. Boteo is a way to go into the street and ask the people to donate some money. And this money has been used sometimes to buy uh, pens and notebooks or pedagogical material that they will use uh, into the towns. And the government say that it is, they are troublemakers because they are uh, asking for this money. But the government never recognized that it's, this situation happened because they have been reducing the budget for education. Uh, the long history for the rural school is that the student usually became linking with the popular movement too. Uh, that is why also the uh, school have a lot of support for the population because many times they became involved in to support the popular struggles. That is in general situation with the uh, uh, school teachers in, in Mexico and it's the situation with Ayotzinapa. Mostly the, of the rural uh, school uh, has been disappearing, disappearing now. Macnumaxa in Chiapas, uh, El Meche in uh, Hidalgo, uh, uh, Tiripetio, uh, all those schools has been reducing the budget and almost disappearing. And this because the policies for the government to disappear this kind of school. They don't want a critical teachers. One of the things that uh, we've done as a federation is uh, we've uh, expressed our concerns uh, to the uh, Consul General here in uh, in Vancouver at the Mexican Consulate. So I'm just wondering whether uh, you've been uh, successful in uh, getting a uh, meeting with the, uh, the consulate here in uh, Vancouver and if you've had any other... Um, uh, meetings with them previously and uh, you know what are they saying and are, are they uh, helpful in any way and that will go to uh, either uh, Hilda or Ryo or to both of you the Mexican government we have no we now we, we no longer have any relations with them. They have closed the doors to us both in Mexico and in the outside of Mexico. And so communication with them, we, we have none nor any information. As I said, for them the case is closed, so so we but we won't allow that. So that's why we're here um, in other in outside of Mexico demanding that they have to continue investigating and that they find our children. Un comentario sobre lo que pasó aquí consulate. en el consulado. We went to have a press conference in the morning, and when we were putting the table and the chairs, in order that Hilda and the chief Phil Stewart and Libby Davis uh, and Jorge will sit, a manager from the building arrived and they say, you need to leave, uh, or I will call the police to kick out you and we say well we are not leaving then he say then you have to go to the upstairs and talk with the uh, Mexican consulate to give us the permission to do the press conference they were asking us to ask the permission to the Mexican consulate to do the the press conference and Steve and uh, and, and I well, especially Steve say well, we are not asking them for permission they are the criminal and because they are who are uh, part of the government, who don't want to answer the, the government. So we can say, instead, to somebody came or, and be friendly to say, hey, you are welcome, you want to say something, they send us the police. They say, send us this guy to, uh, to threaten us to say, I will send the police if you don't go. Or you ask me for permission to, to speak. That was happened today in, in the in the morning, and that remind me what uh, what uh, Hilda say many times. 
the government usually send us the police to, well, she can explain better than me, I guess, uh, what the, the answer for the government is with them when they, they go to see them. How the police acting, how those kind of people do against them. When we go to protest, when we go looking for them even, for looking for our children in Iguala, the police, they send the police, they send uh, the uh, riot police. They've hit students, they've hit teachers, um, we've had black eyes. There was a parent, they broke his arm uh, with their shield things that the riot police have, and so the police really, they only, they, when they, they send the police to hurt us, to hit us, they don't have any respect for us. And we've said to the media that it's the public force that detains the vandalism. They call us vandals for looking for our children, but we say, no, we're, we're going to continue looking because it's not, they're not, it's not an animal or a, an object that's been lost, it's our children. So we'll continue looking for them. We don't have, we're not afraid of the government anymore because we've been demanding our children and we'll continue demanding for our children. So just, I have a couple of questions. What happened with the press conference? What happened with the press conference? Yes, we did the press conference uh, because as, as Steve is really smart and he say, yeah, you want to send the police, but just wait a few minutes when Libby Davis arrive, the member of the parliament and the chief uh, Phil Stewart arrive. Then you can call the police. <laughs> uh, and then, then the guy say, okay, 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 you can do that, but uh, on the street, uh, a little bit uh, far from here. Yeah. Then we did the press conference. I'm afraid the question that. Davis estaba allí porque ella es un miembro del Parlamento muy respetada y va a hacer algún moción ha, ha sido algún compromiso de, de hablar al gobierno de Canadá a hacer algún demanda la, al gobierno y si va a mover. I would like that Hilda uh, could explain to you Hilda what uh, Hilda and I will Libby, say what uh, Libby Davis uh, answered. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hilda, in, uh, during the press conference, Hilda asked to everybody uh, to demanding to the Canadian government to asked to the Mexican government to looking for his children or made the whole investigation in order to find the uh, 43 uh, uh, kidnapped uh, uh, students uh, because they were forcibly disappeared. And then Libby Davis say, okay, I have my task. Now I know that what I have to do, I will uh, call my uh, colleague in the parliament because you are meeting, you are going to have a, this meeting with the committee, the human rights committee, and then uh, we will pressure to to say something in the parliament. That's what she said, and they are they will work uh, to make a pressure. Any other questions at this time? Can you explain the rest of your tour? Where are you going to be speaking? Where are you going to be speaking? We're going to Ontario in Ottawa. And we're going to Quebec. We're going to do different activities, going to do different activities, but really what uh, Raul knows more about the activities that we're going to carry out. So 
Van a estar en Quebec, en la Universidad de Quebec. Van a tener un foro público. Eh, van a estar también eh, haciendo also todo un día de an, an entire day of workshops on human rights uh, with Jorge in Quebec. There's, there's also the possibility of um, attending the Assembly of Quebec uh, or having a statement read about the issues at the Assembly with, of the 43 disappeared students. Después de eso, Hilda y Jorge van a ir a Guelph y van a reunirse con and also with the Kitchener University students. They will join with the union people in in Ontario too, and having a workshop with the steel workers and other union people. Then in 27 they they will have a indigenous welcoming ceremony in Ottawa, and they will join with the uh, national uh, in Federation of Native People there, and the Woman Federation, Indigenous Federation in, in Ottawa too. After that, in 28, they will testify in the committee, the Human Rights Committee the, in the Parliament. During the time when they are stay here in, in BC, they are having uh, tomorrow an activity with the Vancouver Labor uh, District uh, in the afternoon. Um, they also are meeting with the a member of the parliament. They have meeting with another three uh, members of the parliament, one liberal and two other members of the uh, NDP. They will have also an activity in with the UBC Wednesday, and also an activity with uh, yes and uh, Justice and Education Society in the middle of the day with some judges and a social worker and uh, who work related the, with the issue, the justice issue in in BC. And in 70, in Thursday, uh, they are going to visit Kamloops. Kamloops to have a, 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 a meeting with a native reserve there. And it's a public event and everybody's welcome too. And Friday, uh, to say a good trip to Quebec, uh, we are organizing a, a, a fundraising in the Legion, uh, it's in commercial and and six. And uh, we start in 6 p.m., so everybody's welcome to celebrate with them, to give them a little bit the comfort and support because all the funding that we collected, this same day we are giving to them to say that is where we collected, take it and to continue your struggle. That is the, the, the whole uh, schedule. Yes, in the back there. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, a little louder. Okay. I'll stand up and hear you. So, um, thank you for sharing your experience <coughs> and <coughs> your trip to finding the missing children and starting this movement. Um, yeah. uh, my understanding of the current situation in Mexico is that this, what's happening, is just an aspect that reflects the bigger picture where there are goods and, uh, and statuses and how people work together and how the people of Mexico work in the government. So because this is a project to make Mexico a safe place, what is the objective and what is the plan to achieve that? What happens if you find the children? What happens if you don't? And what is going to do? Sorry, could you repeat the last bit? There was some noise here I couldn't hear. Uh, what, what did you um, after you said make Mexico a safer place? Yeah, what is the objective and what is the plan in the long run? Entonces, ¿cuál es eh, con la campaña de hacer que México sea un lugar más seguro o que, que el gobierno canadiense también actúa para, para presionar al gobierno mexicano y para reconocer que México ya no es un lugar seguro como declara el gobierno canadiense, ¿cuáles son los objetivos de esta campaña? Para nosotros, the 
for us, the principal objective is uh, to find our children. And uh, what we're doing is, number one, find our children. Number two, we want to, this to end in Mexico. So we're fighting for our children, but we're also fighting for the other people. Because many people have children in Mexico, and we don't want them to go through what we're going through. And so um, we need to continue our struggle, um, because if we don't want this to government to continue these kind of actions, we have to keep pressing, but for Mexico to change, I think we need to change the entire government. Uh, the government is corrupt. Um, the government is, is permeated with, with drug trafficking. And so for Mexico to change, to become a safer place, we need a total change in the government in Mexico. And so this is what we're demanding, is that this stop. It cannot continue. Um, we have more children, we have grandchildren, and so our struggle is to find our children, but also so that the overall situation in Mexico changes. And um, these changes um, also affect people overseas. People who come to visit us have suffered some of the consequences of, of what's going on in our country as well. And so we do not want these kinds of murders and disappearances to continue, and that's why we're raising our voice. Well, at, at this time, I uh, I want to thank uh, Hildia for uh, sharing her story, and uh, we appreciate that it's not easy to uh, uh, to, to first have to deal with a, a missing child, but also have to keep uh, reliving uh, these memories over and over. But it's important to be sharing the stories. And to uh, Raul uh, for being here too and his work uh, that he does here in, in Vancouver and, uh, and the struggle in terms of the Mexican people uh, in, the, in his homeland. And uh, you know, know that, that we've heard from you and uh, you know, we get to hear more firsthand experiences of, 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 of what's happened in Mexico and um and what's needed and what the long-term uh, objective is in terms of uh, of changing and making a more safe place for for everyone and uh, you know we have a responsibility to act and uh, you know as the bctf we have talked with the consul general in in, in vancouver and it's really uh, upsetting to hear that uh, uh, you know they refuse to uh, to meet with you again because they think this set issue is settled and is nowhere near settled. And so, uh, when I did talk uh, with them, uh, they assured me that they would be uh, you know welcoming a a, a meeting, uh, and but to be denied a meeting with uh, with their own people. So I think we're going to definitely express our concern again to the consulate here in uh, in Vancouver. You know we've written to the uh, president of Mexico and other authorities and. Uh, We've also participated in the marches um, with the Mexican community in Vancouver, and we'll continue to do that because I think that's important to continue to bring light to the to the struggle. And uh, we know that we need to do more. And you're absolutely right uh, that we have to take up this issue with the Canadian government, and and it's good. Uh, that that Libby Davies will also be doing this and and talking to her uh, colleagues on uh, Parliament uh, Hill because that's important and. And we have to let our government know that uh, you know it can be business as usual uh, with our government and the uh, Mexican uh, government, and uh, you know we'll be calling on uh, with others uh, and asking our government here in Canada to revoke the uh, safe country status uh, that they have for Mexico and eliminate the barriers for people seeking protection in Canada. Because what we know it is right now, it is not a safe uh, place, and this is just an example that's. Uh, uh, is brought this uh, to the light and so uh, we're going to be asking uh, the Canadian government to hold the uh, Mexican government to the same high international human rights standards that we expect of all democracies and all of our trading um, partners and uh, you know we again uh, uh, thank you uh, for coming here and helping uh, uh, educate us about the realities of, of what's happening in uh, in your country and uh, you know we'll be with you in solidarity as you uh, continue uh, your uh, your journey and uh, looking for uh, the return of uh, of um, your children your students uh, safe return and uh, getting the government to finally act upon this so uh, 
thank you very much uh, for, for being here and sharing the story. And uh, also on behalf of uh, one of our uh, small locals in the, in the BCTF, uh, local Arrow Lakes, uh, they've uh, donated uh, $250 here to uh, support you in your journey to, uh, to Ottawa and, 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 and the journey in, uh, to continue finding justice here. So this is from one of our locals. So I'd like to thank you for giving me your time to come and listen to us and I continue to ask you that you intercede on our behalf because it's our children that we're looking for and so I thank you a great deal for both your economic and your moral support. Thank you very much. If you have a chance, you si can go to the website, uh, 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 makemexicosafe-ottawa.ca. Uh, uh, you can see two petitions that you can sign online. One, uh, the petition is, one is petition asking to the uh, Canadian government to act in, to do something in order to uh, bring back alive those uh, 43 uh, missing students. And the other uh, petition is a letter sending to the Mexican government to demanding him to do the whole investigation in order to uh, find the student because uh, as Hilda say, they, uh, the government uh, is responsible for the safety need for his citizens. So we invite all of you to sign this petition, those two petitions online, and that's another way to support uh, the struggle for the Yotzinapa people.